Around the NFL Podcast has not considered trading for Baker or Jimmy. <laughs> From the Chris Wessling Podcast Studio, it's Around the NFL. I'm Dan Hansis. I'm in a studio filled with some heroes. Greg Rosenthal, Mark Sessler, sitting to my right. Don't you dare call him Pat. <laughs> Patrick Laban. What's up, everybody? What's up? You can call me whatever you want. All I'm, right. I'm, just, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'll take it. I got paper in my hand. This is crazy. Dan likes using unpopular ways to say people's names. He likes calling him Pat Claybon. He likes calling me Greggy, mm-hmm. which only uh, called West Dan uh, and Chris. Dan and Debbie Rosenthal, <laughs> Not like un- my mom. Used. Unpopular is almost like a there's like a negative connotation to that. It's more just like more off the grid, like a lesser alias. Yeah. Well, even lesser is a kind of negative way okay. to look at it. It's just more like off the beaten path of how the person is addressed. It was at the point, though, because, again, these text conversations that bubble up during the weekend, uh, you were Which saying, we apologize for. No, no, no. I, I, they're you know? perfectly pleasant. It's just that I, I don't always track them as carefully as I would if it were, you know, right before a burning work meeting or something. And it's like, oh, let's have Pat on the show. And I spent a big chunk of yesterday thinking that we were having Roto Pat, who's been on our show before, to join us for the QB debate. So, Which he would have been great on the He would have done a well. fantastic. But, but I think we've got our guy right here, Claybon. Shout out to Pat Darty. Yeah, shout out to Pat, who goes by oh, Pat, right? Roto Pat. Yeah. Which is, but it's not a. a I call him Dan's, Patrick. Yeah, it's a, it's a, <laughs> not lesser, but Dan would never talk about Revenge of the Sith. He would say Episode Three. I have no right. idea. What, yeah, yeah, he mean he wouldn't do he, either. But yeah, yes, right. right. <laughs> um, all right, save it for the Spock podcast. Oh my god! All right, that'll well, be fun. Just a needle, right? <laughs> so, anyway. He, Dan he knows so much more than he exactly, lets on. Because you absurd. have to, to right. do this stuff like that. Dan definitely has a Bill Belichick talking about my face vibe whenever uh, when <laughs> Star yep. Wars comes up. Facts. Uh, All right, I'm not I so sure I about this. My face. I honestly, um, I've said it to you, Mark. I have not seen the films. I maybe saw them when I was four or five, the initial ones. Oh, and then I oh, we, saw Phantom Menace in '99. La Reveal. And well, I've, that, that's you. It's like saying I don't eat French food because the one time I went and had food at a French restaurant, I was poisoned. Because Phantom Menace is the equivalent of that. Like, but again, terrible. I, but also we don't need to talk. I, I about haven't that. seen yeah. any of them other than I know I ones it. as a kid. I know. I, I know. I, and I don't defend more than about <laughs> eight hours of the entire product. That's the thing that I get annoyed by. It's um, I have a I have a institutional knowledge just because you guys won't shut up about it for 35 straight years. <laughs> and by you guys, I mean, well, you guys, yes, but the rest of America and right. the world as well. You're our pop culture liaison with a massive blind spot to it one is. of the biggest <laughs> events in American cinema history. It's why yes. uh, Mark always wants Pat on the show to even out the <laughs> Here, Star Wars this. numbers. <laughs> I'll take it. Anytime I can shoehorn five minutes of prequel also, discussion. <laughs> I should Call say, you want. I don't, that's not a self, I've never said that I am the pop culture savant of this show. I have a very, I'm passionate about Well, no, about you said of the entire in, NFL media group at one point, that was sort of where you were going with your well, trajectory. I, Old end around scores being settled here. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, that was, a, that was a, an interest of you. You like to blend pop culture with right. football and sport. But I I've never said that. I am the voice of this show for pop culture. That, Not of this you're show. You're foisting that upon me. I, I meant more of NFL media, a larger king, th- th- right. this little thing, no. Right. So you bring up Star Wars. Yeah, this is my fault. I'm okay with it because we talked about the prequel. Um, I will, and I have said one of those dopey movies I said to you and Zumwalt, I'll watch it with you. Right. Teach me. You're overrating my interest in in the whole thing, too. Uh, So. uh, No, I'm being foisted into a position of like, I've already told you what I feel about this. Greg is falling asleep right now. He he wants to move on. (laughs) Anyway. I'm just saying like... Someone that can like compare and contrast different Carrie Fisher biographies are probably in it at the high level that Dan is, is saying. Which is fine. Well, that's your opinion. <laughs> Which is fine. I don't want you ever to feel uncomfortable about it's, being a Star it, Wars. I, because I am actually, there is more nuance to it. That's all. <laughs> Tell me about it. I'm telling you that I think about hey, eight, listen, 88% of the product is un- unattractive to me. I think they've largely failed hmm. in sitch. massive ways. Tough sitch. All right, let's get into today's show because <laughs> we'll we got a very important that. program. I'm leaving. I cannot believe we would be caught up with that madness when we have come together for the return. Hit it, great. Ah. 
Ah, you chopped off my hand. Ah, I'll get revenge. Nailed it. <laughs> you are my father. No, I that backwards. Yeah. You are <laughs> again. See. <laughs> All right, here we are. Here we are. I'm making enemies in the room here. <laughs> this is a golden boy again by Sam Spence, the legend. NFL Films. The quarterback is the golden boy of this sport. And if we have carved out any if we've carved out any niches within the NFL landscape, the NFL media landscape through the years, it's great. That's awesome. And if you had to pin something that we've done on this show that has gotten the most traction, it's the Dalton scale. And the Dalton scale is a creation of the great late Chris Wessling. And, um, you know, I was going to describe what that is. But as I always did, whenever we did this exercise and we didn't do it last year uh, because last year was a pretty heavy year, um, but we've done it every other year on this show. I would always open this exercise by throwing it to Chris and saying, Chris, what is the Dalton scale? I also always needed a reminder. <laughs> you always this... struggled with it. I'm still not totally <laughs> sure you've got it, but let's see. I, I think I have it now. This is what Chris said the last time we did this exercise with him in 2019. Andy Dalton is the <laughs> prime meridian of NFL quarterbacks. He represents quarterback purgatory. If you are ranked below Andy Dalton, your franchise needs a quarterback. If you're ranked above Andy Dalton, you're in ship shape. Everything's figured out. You're good to go. And uh, later in that same episode, and it was so nice to go back and listen and hear Chris's voice. He was in good form. He was healthy at this time in his life. It was days uh, before his wedding. Days before his wedding. Right. He had beaten cancer the first time and was on top of the world. So it was really it's a nice listen if you ever want to go back and listen uh, and hear the essence of, of Wes. Uh, he also went on and explained why the scale works and always will work, whether or not Andy Dalton's involved or not. The beauty of this scale is that it's truly reflective of quarterback play in the NFL. He could be ranked 14 one year and still be the prime meridian, and the next mm. year be ranked 24th and still be the prime meridian. So here we <laughs> He's are. So right. <laughs> so here we are. And that's true. And this is, uh, tell me if I'm understanding it correctly, Greg Rosenthal. Greggy. Andy Dalton is the prime meridian. So there can be 23 quarterbacks that are true franchise guys. And that just means that there are more upper level quarterbacks than other years in this, in the, using this as an example. But Dalton will always remain that cutting point, the break point between the guys you can trust and believe in and the riffraff. And, as a team builder, anyone below Andy Dalton, you probably have to have a serious conversation about whether he should be the leader of your team. Well, I think we need to find who's the new Andy Dalton on some level because exactly. Andy Dalton's now now a backup. And I think we'll get into who we are considering, who we're not. Some of the youngest quarterbacks, they don't really fit the Dalton scale as much. It's more for someone that you've seen for a few years, maybe not just one year, not rookies, certainly. Uh, so it's also the, the memory of Dalton, of who Dalton was for the majority of that run uh, with the Bengals. Now, of course, uh, he's a backup with the Saints. And um, I have a feeling Andy Dalton's going to be part of this 2022 season more than we expect. In some way or another, it's just going to happen that Andy Dalton's making a big time spot start. But he's no longer really right. the prime meridian. This is the Dalton scale. And yet, when I look at the list that we all put together, and then we had a consensus list that uh, Gravedigger helped put together, Andy Dalton doesn't appear anywhere because the passages of time. And uh, I would say before we get into our list before we get into the consensus list, I think it is um, important that we pay respect to the man for which the exercise was named by Chris Wessling. Hit it, Graver. Dalton's had success thrown to Tyler Boyd out of the slot. He's got single coverage right now. Green for sure will be doubled at the bottom of the screen. Ravens trying to end it here. Fourth down. Dalton steps up. Dalton throws. It's complete. Cincinnati Bengals have stunned this crowd. 
Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Week 17, 2017. Dalton knocks the Ravens out of the playoffs, gets the Bills off the Schneid and back into the postseason. Wes was pretty annoyed about that, if you recall. He was. He was not like, <laughs> it, I think it, he was annoyed that the Bills were not good. And he was kind of on that, like, guys, don't respect them if they made the playoffs because they're not a good team. Wasn't there a heat there? I, I kind of recall that. Yeah, there's a Tyrod yeah. Taylor led Bills team. That very different than the Bills team. That's this is they are no relation to the team really. No, and they fizzled out them. to the yeah. Jaguars in one of the weirder, uh, like low octane wild card games <laughs> we've ever witnessed. Oh, that's right, Bortles, right? And I now know Dan why you came into the newsroom. Our newsroom is like very hushed, and um, it, it's like a fallout. It's show really strange, but uh, Dan came in belting that song out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it turned heads. It, it, it was it. Is that the last great Dalton? moment i mean he's had he's had a couple since uh he's had some decent starts since but i don't know if there's been anything like that. i think that's the dalton moment <laughs> which is funny because they like were playing out the out. string as i recall yeah. cincinnati and that was just a stunning knife through the heart of the ravens in their building uh just a kind of a great let, certainly the last great cincinnati dalton moment all right so let's get into it great to hear from wes great to pay respect to andy dalton Hey, last time we did it in 2020, I asked Graver to go check it out. We did this with Chris also um, to see the previous year, what kind of takes what takes stood out from the Dalton scale the last time we did it. Uh, and now uh, if you could share some, and Patrick, I know you also uh, checked out the app, so if you had anything to share. But uh, what do you got there, Grave Digger? Great. Yeah, so – like Greg just said, even back in 2020, you guys were discussing, should Andy Dalton still be the scale or do we need to find a new player to be that that prime meridian quarterback? And there was some thoughts that Dave Damashek was actually on that episode. Thought maybe Cam Newton could be that guy, maybe Ryan Tannehill. A couple people said Ryan Tannehill, Jared Goff. But then mm. Derek Carr came up. And there was a big sticking point around Derek Carr because – you guys all had him ranked slightly different. You all kind of agreed that Carr might be the new Prime Meridian, except for Mark, who was very low on Derek Carr and actually said he would take Gardner Minshew over Derek Carr back on Checks that out. episode. Um, <laughs> that was the hottest bad take, but really all of you guys oh, were pretty low <laughs> on Carr. I feel like Is Carr, Minshew have a job right now, by the way? Or is he still in the street? Come on, he's a backup quarterback. Yeah. He's one of the best backups in the league for the Philadelphia oh, they held Eagles. On to yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, easy. Settle down. He'll, can I, can I mention one title for a while? One Derek Carr related well item. Year. Let's sure from the year before the 2019 one that w when Wes was in <laughs> was was on fire. Um, multiple people wanted to have Sam Darnold over Derek Carr, and Greg said he wanted Dal Andy Dalton over Derek Carr. So we have what been year? all over the 2019. So we've been all over the mix. Like, he had outside of that 2016 season been a largely hot and cold passer. Yeah. Well, that's it's interesting because that would have meant. Uh, I'm sure I was gassed up because Darnold finished well. You, were, his, his you, were, you said it was season. just like you were positive but about. I it. when I made my list for this year, I took out anyone that's just one year deep into their career, just because I think you need to see more. And Mac Mac Jones was the only guy, that, and we'll get into Mac Jones because I think he's an interesting case here. Um, but I removed. Anybody that's a rookie, anyone that's played only one year, and Deshaun Watson. Those are the guys I pulled from the list. Um, is there any, any other touch uh, takes, though, that stood out? Or is that? That was pretty much right, the biggest good. thing. I, I, I thought it was because um, Sheck had brought up Cam and the idea that there's hmm. guys out of the league that could make their way into the Dalton scale. But, like, year over year, the, the discussion about the scale itself – it has to be the Dalton scale. It has to remain the Dalton scale. But as a concept, because you go through lists, there's lists online. They have you guys write lists. Everybody does lists. It's hard to get the full context mm -hmm. of a list. But what this vehicle provides an opportunity for is to discuss the way that the particular list is made, how important well it is for certain things. And so if people look at the list or the consensus list and they're like, oh, you got this guy there, it's impossible. We don't know how they're going to play. We don't know if Derek Carr is going to become the greatest player in the NFL history. We don't know if somebody's going to have a Josh I, I Allen know it. like I know it. revolution. He's not, he's not becoming the greatest player in NFL history. <laughs> uh, his, his maturity and his improvement and where he is now, which looking at our rankings, he, he's at 12, and we all had him almost identical between 12 and 14, so we all saw him in a very similar way, I think is uh, instructive because 
he, he's probably been the same guy for the most part throughout. And we were on the fence whether he's really the guy, much like a lot of Raiders fans out there. And I think now we've come to the conclusion that he is. But part of the reason is, is that he's improved. Like you, you are allowed to improve and we're, we're baking that into the rankings, who we think can improve, who we don't think will improve. And Carr is undoubtedly a different quarterback than he was three years ago when he refused to throw the ball deep. And now he's one of the more effective deep ball throwers in the league. I, he still has the things that we got concerned about back then. And that's why he's like in the 12 to 14 range and he's not in the top 10. Uh but he got better. Yeah. You can, you can get rewarded. And it should, just so everyone knows, yes, Andy Dalton is essentially being replaced in this conversation. But like, uh, to use a baseball term, the Mendoza line, which was a, uh-huh. a Mario Mendoza of the 1979 Mariners, uh, that's when that was coined, of a guy that struggles to get over 200 batting average. He's long gone, and yet that's always now how it's known. It's the Mendoza line. Yep. That's what the Dalton scale is. It will always be the Dalton scale, but who is the new Dalton. Derek Carr is certainly one of those names. I think, um, Mark, I want to say for me, and I'm curious anybody else that disagrees, because this isn't a straight QB ranking exercise. We're trying to figure out that prime meridian. But there are there are 10 names for me that I feel, um, and I'll do them in order because they just, there's the order of the quarterbacks I had that are out of the conversation uh, because there's no doubt to me that they belong on the right side of the line. Rodgers, Brady, Josh Allen, Mahomes, Herbert, Burrow, Stafford, Prescott, Russ Wilson, and Lamar Jackson. That's where my list cuts off of debate. I I have mm. Kyler Murray still up for debate, Derek Carr up for debate, and then everyone else. Do you guys disagree with that? Mine is the the, the out of out of out of conversation players you mentioned are essentially identical to mine if they're not in the same order. They're essentially identical. Right. The consensus list you you were pretty close to. I mean, Stafford would be part of that for me, and Kyler would too, and and Derek Carr would. As well. And that's our top 12 on our consensus. I mean, are we really discussing whether Stafford or Kyler Murray are whether you're set as as a franchise quarterback? Both of those two guys, for instance, I think were the best quarterback in the league for about a month at a time. Matthew Stafford was the best quarterback in the league for the playoffs, which is, you know, I think you should get a little extra weight for that. Uh, And so he he was eighth or ninth on my list overall. He's 10th on the consensus list. And Kyler, even though um, I guess you want to put him up here, to me, there's not much question. Uh, Through seven weeks last season, he was number one on my QB index. And like any any quarterback that can put that kind of stretch together, and he's had other stretches for his career, I'm not talking about them whether they are a franchise quarterback or not. He he has done it. And he's been a little more up and down than you would want. And he's had his minor injuries. But to me, those 12, and I'm I'm throwing Carr in there. Uh, the consensus list was Rodgers, Mahomes, Brady, Allen, Herbert, Burrow, Dak, Russell Wilson, Lamar, Stafford, and Kyler Murray. Was the top. I get why Dan has maybe some Kyler concerns, though, because two years in a row, it's been injury-based to some degree, but they've fallen off a cliff as a team. His play fell off at the end of last year, but... Other stuff. There's other stuff. There's yeah. there's the idea that is, like, this guy a natural leader? Is, like, football everything that he cares about? Maturity? But on top of that, if he if he reaches those MVP levels, if that's what you're going to get if he grows and he becomes more consistent... He's still young. Right. I think, I feel, even though I have him outside my top 10, Patrick, I, I feel totally fine... In, in terms of us uh, reaching a consensus here to have Kyler and Carr on the right side as yeah. well. Are you on board with that? No, 100%. Yeah. I mean, the way I, I try to break mine down is to go, uh, what unique talents do you have that the rest of the league doesn't offer? And, and my scale kind of favors that. And Kyler definitely has that. Um, it, you know, there's this asinine question from the franchise about, you know, the, the future, like he's there, like he clearly has the ability and, and that's all you're looking for. Right. Um, Andrew Luck decided he didn't want to play football anymore. I would have still had Andrew Luck on my team if I could have convinced him to play. And so if you can pay Kyler and he shows up, then yeah, you do that. But yeah, between him and, and Derek Carr, I, I, I've seen enough to say like, why, why am I going to go into quarterback purgatory and search for another quarterback when I have a quarterback that I can win with? So we agreed yeah. so much. It's, it's almost outrageous. Like our top tens are essentially the same. It's almost like we do a show together. Yeah. Uh, Boy, it our, didn't take long to come up I, with the top ten. Right, maybe yes. two minutes. Well, and I think that's reflective of the it whole took me six hours. The whole league tape study. And, I think this right. exercise, the top twelve to thirteen, and even the top fifteen, sixteen, seemed 
pretty defined. Like I had Russell Wilson the lowest at 11. Uh, Mark had him at eight. Uh, Dan at nine. Claybon at six. But like, still, what are we talking about here? That's not. The, it's not like I'm burying him. I think his average level of play has been significantly below any of the rest of the top 10 uh, over the last two years. We kind of forget that he was meh to start last year, even before the injury. Uh, To me, he he hasn't played at that like really high level in a lot longer than any of those other names like Dak and Burrow. And I'm sure he's going to light it up this year. You're saying the same thing with Kyler. You're saying I can look at a stretch. What about the first six or seven weeks of 2020? Wasn't, yeah. wasn't he completely on fire? Yes. An MVP. Yeah. So he had, I don't think he's really. That's debate, sort of what I mean that we're almost all ag- agreeing. All these names, including Carr for the most part are, are the same. I had Tannehill as my uh, 12, which was the highest I see that anyway. All right. So mm. Tannehill, let's start here in grave digger. I know this is a sensitive topic for you. So just try to comport yourself with professionalism. <laughs> uh, Tannehill, you know, we've even, I think in this exercise, made him the Tana scale. We've talked about it. That was when he was on the Dolphins. At one point, we thought he was the Tana scale. He fit fit very well. Here we are, years later. I have him at 14. Greggy at 12. Mark at 15. And Pat Claibon at 15. So, um, he is certainly in this conversation as that guy. Right? And and you try not to put too much into one playoff game. And Greg, I know you've, you've talked about it before, that maybe that game wasn't quite as bad as some people remember in the playoffs. I did rewatch it, the coach's film. That He made a couple of bad throws, but he was, it wasn't the worst game. The first and last throw were pretty ghastly, but, like, yeah. Um, he's still – he was another – he was steady. He's a guy that you can trust. He's taking them on deep playoff runs. And yet, where are we now, Claybon and Tannehill, as we spin into 2022? It's – you You feel you felt a regression. I mean, it, and I haven't gone back and recently watched those games, uh, especially the Bengals game, but it, it, it feels like late – Dolphins era uh, Tannehill to a certain extent. And when I'm doing the exercise, right, because what I did was I assigned 30 points for accuracy, uh, uniqueness, right, I love this. And, and and well as just playmaking. And so the guys that I feel like can't make plays, like Ryan Tannehill's ability to make plays when athleticism is such a big part of the game – it, it has diminished uh, recently hmm. over the years to, to me. Do and you so see that? Down a little bit. Um, Grave Digger, do you agree with that? For the most part, I think one one area Tannehill doesn't add a lot of value is the ability when things break down to just make something happen off script, like roll out of the pocket and buy time. Like he has good athleticism and he can like pick up yards with his legs, but he doesn't like buy time. He's buy a great time, red zone runner, time. one of the better, one of the better. But in a in a like it has to be called for him type way. And the only way I'd push back there is few guys make more plays when just holding on to the ball. Generally, holding on to the ball and standing there, not a great idea. Ryan Tannehill continues to make more plays in those situations, which is a hard way to live, waiting for the last second. And to me, that's playmaking, like holding it for 2.8, staying in there and making tough throws. I don't think any quarterback in the NFL played better compared to his raw stats uh, than Ryan Tannehill last year. When PFF had him in their top five all year long, like it made sense to me watching each one of his snaps. I would rank them in the bottom three or four in terms of uh, how they protected him. The The running game was obviously up and down. Maybe he doesn't like elevate you as much uh, as you would like, but to me, he is like absolutely a solution. He's a starting quarterback. And I, and I, I think he's closer to the Russell Wilson sort of, Car area, like those three guys, for instance, to me are all in the same area. Tannehill, Car, and I have them two spots below Matt Ryan, but I'd be willing to flip that if I were trying to build a team at this point. Right. And I think he has blazing toughness. But the Titans have told us what they think. They went out and drafted Malik Willis. Yeah, but it's they like, drafted four guys before that, and if anyone had drafted, you know, like they expected, they would not have ended up. It's with it's Malik just Willis. it's it's no it's a notable draft pick. All right, how about Matt Ryan, Mark? Because he's a guy uh, that for years and years and years on this podcast, comfortably in that uh, top 10, 10 to 12 spot. But as he's gotten older and um, his arm strength is diminished and maybe doesn't move as well, not that he ever moved really well, um, he's become more of a target for the defense. What do you think about age 37 Matt Ryan in a new setting with a better offensive line? 
I think the setting is good the same way the setting was good for Carson Wentz a year ago. And I have more, much more faith that Matt Ryan can go in there and succeed right away. And, the, yeah, and everything they've said about him in OTAs, I realize it's OTAs have been like he's fitting in really well. Everything looks good. He doesn't look 38 necessarily. But at 13, I think he is a candidate to, to completely drop down this list. If things don't go well, I don't see him sticking at 13. The consensus, I, I'm, I'm at 13. Consensus is well, you 14. have him higher than the consensus. He's I, 14. Right. Dan consensus, yeah. has 15. Greg has 16. Mark has 13. And Claybon has 13 also. Wait, 13. Claybon and I, I are like in a mind melt here. I, I want to say right now, I feel like this is the guy. Huh. I feel like Ryan is the dude. Hmm. But uh, I'm still open to the conversation and hearing different opinions. But when I think about what this is, and I think, Greg, I know what it is. Um, I also think I factor in, you know, down four, two minutes to play. You need it. You need your quarterback to be able to make that drive. If the guy, if in your mind, like Kirk Cousins, think that's why he's on the wrong side because I don't count on him. Whoa. Matt Ryan, I think more times than not, he could get it done, especially with a better supporting cast. So I think he's right there, maybe a touch above, but he could be, to me, the prime rate. Where you have him on your list at 15, below Ryan Tannehill, above Jalen Hurts, Jimmy G, Carson Wentz, and down and on. That makes sense, what you're saying. Right. I, I think he's snugly you know, just above it, but he does hit some of the the bells here that Wes would talk about with the Dalton scale. He rises and falls a little bit with his surroundings, but in, in that way that he's going to a place where, which I think will have good surroundings for him, especially the coaching, getting rid of the ball quickly. Uh, I like him in that two minute situation. I like how accurate it is. It, I really think he could be like a poor man's Peyton Manning later in his career. Not, not the last year of Peyton Manning, but <laughs> right. the years Hope before not. that in Denver, he obviously doesn't have that kind of talent around him. And I think you saw it last year. And it was actually last year that convinced me he's definitely on the right side because, because I think he did about, there were some games where he just, you knew that because they were playing a team with a good pass rush, it just wasn't going to happen. He, it wasn't going to happen. But if he had any help whatsoever, he would be above that line. And to me, that that means you're, you're just above the Daltons. If it was purely a quarterback rankings list, I would have probably had Matt Ryan higher. But because it's the Dalton mm. scale, right, it's the state of the quarterback position on your team. And I'm not going to have Matt Ryan ahead of Derek Carr, right, at 37. Because of age. Or, or Matthew Stafford or, or bumping him up. I The, the Cousins thing, I just had to go into the minutia and, like, go tit for tat on my three categories to try to find out <laughs> those two who, versus each other. Yeah, that was, they were right next to each other. And I just gave Matt Ryan the edge. Uh, mm. I think it wound up being playmaking because it's just so hard to see Kirk Cousins make a play when the play is not going right. And and I've seen Matt Ryan do it more. That was, that was really what it came down to. And you have them both over Tannehill. Just uh and people just don't. I mean, he went. Them. You went and did the work. You you used I mean, your I scale, tried, and, so. and it could be dumb, right? Here it we, could be yeah. dumb. I, I, I I'm just know. saying, Tana, just... Tana, for what it's worth, like in terms of numbers, the previous two years, and there was no bigger fan in this uh, room during that stretch of, of him than Wessa uh, was a top five ish quarterback. Now I think you can use your logic and know he wasn't really a top five quarterback, but just pure numbers, that's, that's what he was Cousins, two years before. Cousins did it again. Cousins is this doing past it again. year because. The same last summer and last spring, we were having these same conversations, and then you'd be like, "Well, look what he just did." And then you look at the numbers, and again with Kirk Cousins, year after year, the production is there. He completed two thirds of his passes, over forty two hundred yards, three thirty three touchdowns, seven picks, passer rating north of one hundred and three. Um, and yet we know the story by now about him that he's not as good as those numbers look. But at the same time, like if numbers were that easy to attain. And especially if he was in a kind of a stale offense, he has some big playmakers, but like everyone would do it. So to me, it's hard to get a accurate way to read Cousins because he does produce. Mm, he might be the guy then. He's, I think he fits. He's annoying. He fits. Down four, two minutes to play, need the drive. I don't know, though. I don't know if he's that guy. He, oh, they did it a few he times. Did, he, did it all he, did right. he did it. He did it. And he was, he was great. He was, he was high great in the first half of the season. Through, through 10 weeks, we were like, wow, this is a bad season for quarterbacks. Cousins is kind of having his best season. Is there an argument that Kirk Cousins this year is one of the top five or six quarterbacks? But I think he, it's so telling that about five or six weeks left in the season, 
they kind of did a Kirk, let Kirk Cook type of plan of like, we just got to let him uh, throw deeper, be more aggressive. Zimmer was doing And it all kind of fell apart was after it that. Wasn't Davin Cook injured as well? Which yes. Which speaks to it the It was like takeover Kirk. The Wessism is there again. He'll rise and fall. And when the cast went down, so too did their production. And Wes did, you know, ding Dalton for going into the postseason over and over and completely flopping. I think that matters. I just don't trust. There's a le- there was a lack of trust with Andy Dalton to rise up in big moments if the environment wasn't right, and I lacked that trust in Kirk Cousins too. It, it's not. I don't even know if it's rising up. Like to a certain extent, you are how that's how good you are, right? And you need to make a play, right? You needed to, you needed to see Joe Burrow be able to spin away from Aaron Donald, but sure. Aaron Donald's one of the greatest players of all time, and so he made the play. And if like if you can't, if you don't have the ability to make a play. When the play is not there to be made, then right. like that's you're just Kirk Cousins. You're Although in Andy fairness, Dalton. like he he if he was listening to this, he'd probably be like, um, like F at you. least in terms of last year, like what more do I have to do? <laughs> Had that play to KJ Osborne to win the game, the play against the Cardinals early in the season, which they came back on the the final couple drives against the Lions early in the season. Like he did make a lot of big time. Yeah, like Ryan plays. Mallett has highlights, but like I get it. But he's cut. he's sitting at fifteen and he's right. appropriate. He's he, he's totally in an appropriate. I right, that's, he's that's the, where I have him too. And he's a I very talented above, thrower of the football, which I do think yeah. gets a little underrated. Yeah. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a big reason why he has these numbers. He's good. Good at, at what he does, but there are also limitations involved. He might be him. the guy. He might be. I, I do, but I, my my feeling is that he is at this stage of his career still just north of that place, which is what explains his contracts he signed. Right, the way he's his been paid like not out. Andy Dalton. It's like we're trying to. Teams have been tasked with figuring out how do we pay this guy because we think he's the guy, but maybe he's not, and it's worked out for him financially. Certainly, they, the Vikings with this new staff really went through this exercise. When they took over, they had to decide whether he was north or south of the Dalton scale because they could either tack an extra year onto his contract and kind of kick the can, or if they really thought he was south of the Dalton scale, they would have done. They just wouldn't have done that. They would have eaten whatever his salary was this year and made it work, and they decided to give him the money. You I could- do think there's hope that Kevin O'Connell bringing a more Rams-esque type offense will help him grow versus the relationship with Mike Zimmer, which just was such a headache and such a nightmare. He had no belief from his coaching staff. If he grows, at least like statistically speaking, he's going to be an MVP candidate. Like he's that close <laughs> statistically. If he makes a jump from what he's done the last couple of years and is throwing 40 touchdowns and eight interceptions, like. Couldn't he jump Derek Carr? Couldn't he jump Matt sure. Ryan? Oh, sure. He, he I think he's on the right side. He certainly right. has at points. But, he's annoying though. But for the purpose of, of the the scale, right? Yes. Just because guys are lower on the scale doesn't mean the Vikings can't win a Super Bowl. You can still build a team, but ranking the players, I'm I'm not I'm, I'm not taking any of those guys that I have ahead of Kirk Cousins, except maybe Matt Ryan. It's true. If I'm starting a team and and Cousins is there, man, that's that's a tough one. <laughs> I don't. I mean, it, it, you kind of. I wouldn't want to be in that spot, and I do want him to eventually end up with Kyle Shanahan like everyone's been talking about <laughs> forever. But it's like after they're both past their primes, right. it'll just be like like the 49ers have totally fallen apart and Kirk's well, it 39. Would be like, it would be like in Carolina it. in 2029. Right. right. Like the old Muppet guys that are up in the uh, booth during <laughs> the show. Um, what are their names? Anybody? I know you exactly like who you're talking about. What was that, Kirk? You like that? I get you it. Like that. All right. So Tannehill... Ryan Cousins are all kind of names that make sense. As Just above ground it. zero in this conversation. Now, here's a newer name. Statler and Waldorf. Yeah, it's right. Statler. Yeah. yeah, there it is. All right, let's take a break and then get to a new name in this conversation. All right, let's talk Jalen Hurts entering year three. Eagles. We know, Greggy, you're, you're pumped up about his ability um, and what he can bring to this team, even if he doesn't take a big leap in his third season. I have him at 16. Greg has him at 18. You know what? Surprise. Uh, oh, but you had the rookie. You there. know what? Graver pointed out, if you if you remove the, the second-year quarterback from the equation, we all had Jalen Hurts 16th exactly. We all I, have I think him is telling in the you same something here. spot. Yeah. Interesting. What does that mean, Patrick Laban? It it means we we watch the games together sometimes. <laughs> we're we're on the same page. I I it's hard to have him higher, right? Um, when we when we hmm. look at all of the guys that we have, it's hard for him to be significantly higher. 
and then it's very difficult for him to be significantly worse. He's the right. median, and yet I don't know if he's like the Dalton scale guy because I, I think based on the numbers and where we all have him and, and the way I looked at it, like he would be – the 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 median right now now is that the prime meridian like he is the middle of the NFL the thing with Hertz is like you expect him either to go up may, maybe he takes a step back if if the running game you know isn't as dominant uh, my thing looking at him and just trying to evaluate him and we we took the second year quarterbacks out of the mix was I guess I looked at it like if Trevor Lawrence or Zach Wilson or Justin Fields Justin Fields or Trey Lance I, I'm putting Mac to the side but it, if any if any of those guys have Jalen Hurts' 2022 season, a 2021 season this year, how will people view it? And now, granted, the, the running is going to be a little different, but like I think most people would view that as a big leap um, and as a great sign that these quarterbacks are improving and that they're they're maybe going to get to where uh, you believe they would be when they were drafted. And so I. I tend to give Jalen Hurts the benefit of the doubt that if he's improved this much in two years, why can't he keep improving? I'm with you. I think he has a high floor. He does bring, to Claybon's point, special skill sets that other quarterbacks do not in many cases. And yet it's a TBD for me. I just think that the, the, I think the Eagles need to see more information before they decide what to do next offseason. And I'd like to see more information. 16 feels right. He's only started 19 games. He's kind of a In an atypical and, offense, too. Yeah. We, you know, this is his third year, but he, you know, only started four games as a rookie. So it's still. You could almost take him out. But he, yeah, is you the, can almost, he is the middle. But I think we have it kind of right where we're all feeling pretty good about his chances of getting on the right side of it. But it feels premature to, to give him. Give him that nod right now. Like if we had arrows, right, we would all have an arrow for potential at 16 with Jalen Hurts to to go up the list. Where's Tua's arrow? Consensus 17. The sideways double arrows? Yep. Question right. marks. Right. Well, the situation is so much better. Yeah. That you, that you think the production's going to be better, and he seems to be right around that line. Like I've... I, I've thought like the median for his career will be a Teddy type of career. And Tua, fan, Tua Nan doesn't want to hear that, but like it could be worse than that too. He certainly hasn't come out of the gates as good uh, or as well as, as Teddy did, or, you know, some quarterbacks like a Jameis who end up being kind of that middle tier quarterback that th- doesn't end up sticking. Uh, Tua also had about a six or seven game stretch last season where like his strengths really stood out. He gets rid of the ball quickly. He makes decisions quickly. He's on point. He's accurate. He has his limitations, but like you kind of know who Tua is. I have Tua at 20 and he begins um, a period of quicksand where every quarterback beyond him, I have almost no faith in. I would never sign up as my starter. Yikes. And Tua, I think is someone, a candidate to be benched early on in this season. So it's like I, it, he's in total tryout mode at this point. 21 starts. Uh, what do you got, Justin? Well, I just wanted to say three of you have Jimmy Garoppolo <laughs> ahead of ahead of Tua, but mm-hmm. Claybon has Garoppolo so low on his list that it's weighing him <laughs> yeah, pulling him down. Down like, at 27. <laughs> hot guy on hot guy crime. It, it's not I, I, Get well soon, Jimmy. I... I, I I appreciate what Jimmy brings to the table. Yeah, it's true. Claybon had Hurts 16 <laughs> to a 17, and that's where the consensus list ended at two. I had two <laughs> down at 23. I, if, it's tough because I, I need I, to hear more from Patrick because he, he, he the was rest just of the full bustling was, there. If the rest of the league was busting down Shanahan's door trying to get Jimmy Garoppolo, maybe I'd feel like well, I was wrong. Shoulder surgery. you got to factor that in as well. But he, I mean, he was pretty brutal down the stretch last year. Well, and he was yeah. hurt. He was yeah. hurt. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, he wasn't great early either. I know the numbers were pretty good, uh, but last year was the worst year of Jimmy Garoppolo's career, n- no doubt, even before he got hurt, I-, I thought, as like a full-time starter, which was surprising. Tua, to, uh, you could almost take these... I feel like he's too young, too, and it's a bit of a cop-out, but I think it's it's just true. But to me, if you're asking the question, like, is your quarterback situation sol- solved with Tua or not, he's below the ba- Dalton scale. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't feel good enough. Like, I, I think they're in a good situation that they have Teddy as a backup and that you have another year to find out. But I'm not feeling like that's solved. And I and then I think just like we talked about with the top 10 or 11 names that we all felt were comfortably above. I don't think we need to have much debate about the rest of these names unless somebody wants to chime in. These guys are all at this point in their careers comfortably mm. below the line 
Um, let's see. That would be in the consensus list. Winston, Garoppolo, Baker, Teddy, Daniel Jones, Carson Wentz, Jared Goff, Marcus Mariota, Gino, Jake Brisket, Mitch Trubisky, Drew Locke, and Sam Darnold. Anybody want to make a case for one of those guys being in the conversation as the prime Indian? No. A credible case? I, I, do it, Greg. Go, James credible, Winston. Yeah, I know famous. you want to do it. Well, I I think Jameis Winston has been incredibly productive uh, and is coming off the d- season where he made the fewest amount of mistakes and had the best numbers of his career. I don't think he was as good as the fact that at one point in the season he was leading the league in EPA per play and he was already done for the season. Like, he wasn't that but man, he shows you a lot of the things that you want in an NFL quarterback. He plays really well from the pocket. He sh- shows anticipation. Could he mature and get a- ahead of that line a little bit like Derek Carr uh, did, improving in his late 20s? I believe it. I believe it. I don't think he should be the line right now. I have him below. I have him at 20. He's actually my first name under what my uh, Dalton scale would be. I- I'd have Hertz as the last one above it, and then Jameis is the first one below it. But to, to me, him and Baker are very close to that line in that they're going to go up and down with the people around them and that it wouldn't surprise me if they put together a couple years straight of, of good play where we think this is way too low for the two of those guys. If you go back to that 2019 episode again where Baker was coming off his rookie year, this was a sort of a stunning conversation we had. I had Baker Mayfield as the ninth best quarterback in the in the league. Greg had him as the eighth. Oof. Dan the thirteenth. Dan was the closest. Wes had him as the fifth. That shows you how quickly things change. And now Baker is well. I think he is below that, that was line. Off of the his, league's telling his you that rookie season, right? So that that yeah. But I he's think. a he's a quarterback like a lot of these guys at the bottom half here. I mean, I would, if he was on the Jets, I'd have him at wherever you had him too. You know, these <laughs> right. things factor in. Right. No, you made a yeah. strong case, though. You had him clumped up with, like, Jared Goff and others, but it's a reason not to rank these guys for this exercise specifically in the yeah. first two years because well, it's tough. There, there's so much environment going on with how they perform, and, and when the environment changes, these this bottom third can crumble very quickly. Injuries were a huge factor in the way that I did mine out. Uh, that's, that's probably why Jimmy G is so low, why Baker gets punished, and why Jameis is... You know, it's it's hard to see them anywhere other on the other side of the line, just because like they have to they have such a huge hill to climb just to even this play. year this right. year. But I think, and it's it was interesting that they gave Jameis such a big contract. The Saints like a, when they didn't need to, when they obviously wanted a different quarterback, they wanted Deshaun Watson. But man, I know we do this with Jameis all the time, but the man is only twenty eight years old. The 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 production, and I I think he is a perfect guy to have this conversation with. If you put him on those Titans teams, you're telling me he wouldn't have been productive. Like to me, he is going to rise and fall and he's probably right around that line. I, I think he's close. Something about it doesn't ring true uh, for me. Yeah. Though. Cause down four with the game on the line, he's throwing a pick six. There's that also. Well, <laughs> and come on. And Matthew Stafford threw that he's pick not six the a whole bunch, but when you have the ability, eventually no, he, you're going to put in a position where if you make plays and you're a guy who takes risks, you make a no look pass and you win the Super Bowl. Like sometimes it just, it, right. Those guys are getting team, punished yeah. and they should Baker, Jameis and Jimmy. Cause we've seen so much of them that kind of now we know that at, at best you're like a one a where you need to be replaced. I think Daniel Jones is a tough one again to put in there uh, just cause of the situation. Yes. He's, he's below the line. Uh, but, it, but I, I think he'll have a chance this year, man. He, I thought he really showed strides early last year uh, before everything crumbled. And I haven't totally he needs to put it together for 17 games though. You know, at this yep. point, um, before we kind of get to our choices uh, for um, the prime Meridian, and then maybe we could get a consensus choice. We should hit Mac Jones. Cause he was the only guy that kind of stood out, stood apart from the rookies last year. Like I initially, when I was putting them in, I had him, I think, either right above or right behind Jalen Hurts, so around 16 or so. Um, And I think the reason why he's so different is, A, he had a much better season than the other rookies, but B, he was also in a much better better surrounding. So you could definitely make the case that Mac Jones is in this conversation already. Um, So that's another name to throw in there. It's just a little tough for a guy that only has 16, 17 starts. I have him at 17, and I, I think he's above the line from what we've seen. But again, things can change so much in season two. You know, he did trail off last year as well. So I just, it's not a shot against it because he was a rookie and it was a good rookie year. You just, I just need to see more. That's really when I came down on it. You got him at 14, Greg. 
I mean, I and if it, if the exercise was just who do I want for the next five years, I'd have yeah. him even higher than that. Now, I, I could be wrong, like I was wrong about Baker after one year, but I, I think his skill set will travel. And there's this idea that, like, he was in a better situation than all the other rookies. And I, I think that's true. But I also don't think it was an exceptional situation. It was not their best year for their offensive line. It is not a, an amazing uh, group of talented players around him. And I think he's got skill sets that tend to be pretty consistent and that he should be a top 10 type of I mean, quarterback. The for most coaching, of the, Absolutely. Pedi- the, the organization. Absolutely. Uh, he had his health. Um, I'm just saying his number one didn't. wide receiver was yeah. Kendrick Bourne. Yeah. So in the right. offensive line was just not as good as it was the previous couple of years. It wasn't bad either. It, they, well, spent a ton of, they spent a ton of money to improve yep. the offense. Like, Absolutely. It's yeah. very similar to the Jaguars where I think they spent a lot and they went from like the 32nd uh, group around Cam Newton to like the 18th or 19th. But it wasn't like the it wasn't like an amazing group of players. Yeah, that's more Hunter about where Henry. he's ranked, though. But, right. but he, he there's a group of these players that are mysterious to us still that simply do not fit for the Dalton figure. No. Right. He doesn't and really he, fit. He in this doesn't. Because I would much rather have him than Kirk Cousins or Tannehill or Derek Carr for that matter. See, like that's why forward. I need to see more before I say that. But that's I if, mean, you if, if you like him more in general. Think, if, so. if someone was making you choose right now, though. Yeah. You would you would still you would go with those guys for the next three or four years, let's say. Danny. Yeah. <laughs> you would name him again. <laughs> Kirk, you know, Ryan. Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, Derek Carr, Carr. Ryan Tannehill, Kirk it, Cousins. If only because they have a more established resume. Um, and I don't know. I would just I just want to see more from Mac Jones. That's all. That's fair. But it was it was a very promising rookie year. i I could look like a moron this time next year when we have this. Wait, conversation. But how about the OTA conversation that he's hitting a lot of deep throws? He's worked on those dead Bang, body parts. He's, he's more muscle bound now. Best shape according of his to life. reports. I buy into it. He's doing hand I'm all plans. in on Mac. Workout uh, montage. All right, so not a Pats fan that I much will, anymore, but I'm all in on Mac. Did, what did you say? You're not. I said I'm not as much of a Pat. It's it's a weird feeling because I feel like I'm so much higher than consensus on their quarterback, and I really don't think it's, but you know it's my that's bias. Su- that's no, it's subconscious. You still are a Patriots fan. It's I like so you like him a little too. bit more. I like different types, but he really reminds me of Philip Rivers, and I just think that I think that tra- skill set's gonna travel. All right, nice. But let's not career. let's not pretend you're not a Patriots fan. No, I am. I am a Patriots fan. I thought that's what you just said, though. Not, I know he, he not, 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 not as much as, as, well. as, as, much as, a, as a team, but uh, Matt, <laughs> well, that's you know, I'm in a, on Matt. That's a tough look too. That you, it started to diminish as soon as Tom Brady left. I told you guys that it's even not a before good that. I remember Wes got furious. I was like, absolutely, I'm going to be a less of a fan when he leaves. It's like you already experienced the highest of highs. What's the point? Why, why do we it dictate? Not a good to, look. Why do we dictate to other people right. how they like things? Right. Like, things <laughs> things come and go in, in your life. To the the well, do you podcast. think it's a good? Do you think it's a good look though? I, I I think the whole concept of a bad look is dumb. Mm. <laughs> well, all right. Like I think the thing that, is that whatever neutral, the thing that just is. drops a nuclear bomb on the whole <laughs> your, like your, conversation. Your passions, <laughs> you know, they come and go over time. But I'm sort of like it's like after I had already gotten drunk as much as I could, staying out till four or five in the morning, like three to five times a week in New Orleans. I truly had a thought that like it's never going to top brag. that. I know. I'm, I'm saying it's never going to top that. <laughs> so I'm kind of done just like being the going out. Drinking. Oh, guy. So we, so you we missed that era of Greg. I we peaked. have to deal with the post party boy, Greg. I mean, I was still annoying back then. It was like the personality <laughs> was within me. I just was. Asking. So you're you're hanging out with this post pride cast. If uh, you hadn't had your party, it was boy my kids' last day of school. They were at the beach. They needed to be picked yeah, up. Yeah, but wh- what about us? Yeah, Mark. The kids mattered more. That is a great. Well, way that's to put it. There, what about that's us? your answer, Grave Digger? Did you did you find it slightly off putting that Greg finished the pot and took off? Slightly off-putting. I, first of all, I stayed so for an hour making other parents watch my kids <laughs> at the beach while the entire school. I mean, what gets more SoCal than that? They're celebrating the last day of school, then they all go to the beach, and I'm not even there. You know, Greg, we get it. You're plugged in with your children. But it was such a great bonding experience for uh-huh. the rest of us who yeah. stayed. Randy Chavez yeah. behind the glass. We had a great time. I don't know. I stayed Kelly. an extra hour, and you were already getting ready to go, and I left. So I don't know, this might be. We had a marvelous time. Don't head out. We went to a second location. <laughs> nice were they, time. Were they all there? Yeah, I think yeah. the whole crew. I mean, it was, it was a, one group supporting and, and lifting what it, each just other up. what I did. I pulled you aside, and I said, don't stress at all right. about getting the show up. We're here to have a good time and celebrate. Everything. Erica made us all stay until Jet showed up, so we did. That's mm-hmm. true. Then we left. 
I was trying to get out of there before that, and Eric was like, I'll kill you if you leave before Jet gets That's when it, it got, a little, got a little tricky at that point. Yeah, a little tricky. Yeah. This was getting later. <laughs> you guys should try parenting if you ever want to leave a situation. That's true. <laughs> That's... All right, here we go. One more break, and then we're going to figure this out. Probably not. All right, so I'll stick with where I came down earlier on the show. I think Matt Ryan's the pick for me. Hmm. I like my, Matt Ryan a lot. I like his chances in Indy, but I also think he's right there now. Where he And I think that's a re- there's a reason why that's where the Colts ended up digging out of their issue here um, with Carson Wentz. And they and remember, we, we talked about it um, earlier in the offseason about now what do the Colts do? And they had to figure out some. And I think this was like the best case scenario that they get Matt Ryan. But still, it's this version of Matt Ryan's very different than the guy that went to the Super Bowl um, five years ago. So I think he's the guy. Greg, who is your oh nomination? Gosh. Well, I'm so confused now after doing this exercise because Hertz felt like the guy. But maybe he just doesn't make sense because he's too young. Like he's a evolving player. If we all had him 16, he felt like the guy. Uh, but I actually, I truly believe that Jameis makes more sense as the the median. That if you're Jameis or below, you need a franchise quarterback. Uh, and if you have someone better than Jameis, in my mind, that would include Hertz. That would include Ryan Cousins, Mac, Derek Carr. Like then you're then you're good. So I actually think Jameis is. But the so the the median is is the so middle. The player himself. Yes. Is not re- the guy that should be replaced. He's the guy that is in purgatory. Is he right is in yeah, between. Right zone yes. in the middle. Right, He's yeah, in the right dead there. zone. Right. To, I think you, Phantom zone, you ranked you Matt Ryan 15th. Okay, so that's pretty similar to me. But to me, he you don't need another starter if you have Matt Ryan in my mind. So so it has to be someone below it. I don't know. Hurts, Jimmy G. I, I'm going to go with Jameis. Hertz is kind of a weird one in this exercise. Hertz it doesn't work. I think right. you just How removed. Hertz doesn't work. Uh, so for me, because I have to go off my list, Matt Ryan is a little too high for him to, for me to agree there. I have I'm going Kirk Cousins at 15. I think mm. he's in that middle spot where he is a starter. Uh, he has issues. We feel frustrated by him, which were the feelings that I had about Andy Dalton. But then from there, it goes to the netherworld of Mac Jones and Jalen Hurts. We need to see more. And from there, it drops off to Jimmy G. And the Niners have essentially made massive efforts to replace him. Yeah. And then after that, it's backups and, 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 and fill in the blank nondescript. Doesn't it feel like it's Kirk Cousins' destiny to become the Dalton scale? It also fits as a sort of I just so. the person himself. Wes would right? hate this because he always... It was like, we, as we bagged on Kirk Cousins, especially in the 2013 to 2015 early window before he begut, begrudgingly got everyone's respect, I felt like Wes was mostly on an island being like, this guy's a good quarterback. Well, that's why we know? were kissing Cousins, Greg. Cause <laughs> on, on that that's side true. of the that's table, true. he and I both had our Kirk Cousins moment. There was but, a little bit of a Shanahan fascination there. But you are not. Good you can't back. stay as good forever. I think he's declining into the it, Dalton. It scale. will happen eventually. Yes. Yeah, you I say he's there already. I don't think so he's, I think there he's there a year away, maybe. I think that. he's a year away. All right, Claybon. And that's why I I really had to go into it to try to figure out to to slice this bread between Ryan Tannehill and Kirk Cousins and just the recent statistical success of Kirk Cousins and like the plays that he has made, like you mentioned, Greg. I I had to put Kirk Cousins on the other side. I think Ryan Tannehill is the my ten. Home scale. I love this. Wow. Player so we have four different Man. options. So and maybe just for fun, maybe we'll have a vote. Put it on the on the subreddit or on Instagram or both. Um, because I'm nominating Matt Ryan, Greg, Jameis Winston, Mark, Kirk Cousins, and Claybon, uh, Ryan Tannehill. So we don't have any way to break the tie within this room. <laughs> I love uh, it. Which is great. <laughs> I know. When we did this, I really looked at it and thought, like, I don't know. This year, I don't know if there is a but perfect one. <laughs> I, I will say that. I'll say this. Like, Winston, to me, I'm I'm just not on board with him being that high in this conversation. Uh, Cousins, to me, I think we're, like what we just said, maybe a year or two away from dipping down and being that guy. Claybon with Tannehill, that would be the one other than Matt Ryan that I would feel good about and be like, okay, if that if we're going for a con- consensus, Tannehill makes sense. Even though on my list, he's just above the line. But I understand both sides. How annoyed would you be, Grave Digger, if that's how like the voting came down with the listenership? Not that annoyed. I think it makes sense. He's flirted with it before too. He came very close Back when to he being was with Miami. Right? Yeah. I mean, he's been a much better player. And since yet, then. like the, it doesn't make sense this year. 
But I really think of the of the guys on our consensus list around the middle. We had Jalen Hurts sixteen and Tua seventeenth. Tua feels like a future Dalton scale type of guy that like you can never quite decide. And I think it's too early in his career to totally uh, put that on him. But when you think of players that he's like, I think of Alex Smith, who was m- very much a, Tana, uh, a Dalton scale guy. I think of Teddy, uh, who's a little below, but I appreciated that you guys actually had Teddy a little higher on your list than me. And isn't that, I did that below. just for you. Actually. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and, and so it's like, I think that could be to his future, but I, I I think I we're all uncomfortable. On we're all uncomfortable about <laughs> second year players on this list. It just doesn't quite fit. Yeah, Tannehill, I think oh, oh go ahead. Sorry. I was say Tannehill makes sense because the Titans are like trying to figure out if they need to replace him, right? Right. Now. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a huge indicator with some of these some of these guys. Jimmy G in the same boat. If if I'm going down my list, right, and I'm looking at the scenario, I would rather figure it out with Tua. I'd rather figure it out with Jalen Hurts because you can you can get a big win there, right? In terms of the guys having the potential, I don't see anybody underneath that that it's that fits better than Ryan Tannehill to me. Like that, it just keeps being the line no matter how many times. I don't know how we got back into 2012, 2013, and I'm somehow uh, like Ryan Tannehill's biggest uh, fan here. <laughs> but I am just saying, like no one else in this range, and I guess Kirk maybe would be, uh, would have been top five PFF you know, grades two straight years. And then last year, I know he was in the top 10 e- EPA per play, cert- like among the best quarterbacks in the league over the last three years, it- last three years in aggregate, his numbers and his grades. And he's only 33 years old. He deserves a little more respect, but I do understand it. The eye test is all right. Different. Well, does this, cause it'll be fun to see what the listeners think, but do, does this episode fail in its conceit? If we don't have a consensus at the end of the show, or is it okay for it to be open-ended Mark? I think it's okay for it to be open ended because we each came up it's with life. the answer. I'm not shifting off of my answer, right? At this point, I'd like like the, I refuse it's like, to move. It's like the yeah. Sopranos, uh, you know, finale. I always liked it. I liked it being open. We're going to cut to I black. Liked it in the moment, it's 15 years ago uh, <laughs> this day or two days ago, I believe it, it was the anniversary, and I liked it in the moment. All right, Claybon, I w- I just want to make it known that I would be okay to move to your vote. But at the same time, now everyone's dug in. So let's it's not say a Sopranos way. thing because we did definitively say what our picks are. It's also right. like uh, a sign that like the Dalton scale is perfect in its concept and yes. in its creation and that Andy Dalton was the perfect person for it. And we've never come up with another person. Alex Smith <laughs> felt good for like a year or two, but then he like started throwing deep. Like Andy Dalton was the perfect answer. It's kind of like... Uh, I don't know. It's like the perfect uh, law for its time, but times change, you know. Where I'm with Dan, if if I were forced, uh, you know, under duress to go in another direction, Tannehill much more for me than Jameis Winston. Apologies, Greg. I just I well, think certainly Tannehill I would fits. go Ryan uh, of all the other choices. I would go with Dan, but Ryan. Also, Dan's this is like, Ryan. are we? T- Ryan's career could be over in yeah. 500 days. Like, are we looking for someone that's mm. going to be out of the league in a year, two years? All right. Well, we've certainly given you, the listener, a lot to think about. <laughs> Thank you to Patrick Claybon for joining us. We'll be back on Thursday. We'll be back on Thursday with um, another remote show. We're going to be uh, in Santa Monica for the Talent Summit, NFL Media Talent Summit. Uh, we're going to be poolside, and we're going to try to wrangle up some guests uh, from the NFL media um, personality and analyst world. So that will be fun. Famous and... Um, Oh, my goodness, a a guy in a members-only jacket just walked in, and we do have a consensus. The Andy Dalton scale, the winner this year, is the man that is the prime meridian, is 